thank you so much for joining us today for our career success series uh, webinar about the experiential learning abroad course that we are hoping to launch in the fall sea term. So to begin, my name is Addison Welsh and I am the manager of career navigation services here at CSU Global. And if any of you have already inquired about this course, you have probably spoken with me. And so this has been something that I have been working on here for the last couple of years. I am really passionate about experiential learning and also going abroad. Uh, I went to Australia in 2006, and it was an, a life-changing experience and one that has impacted not only my career, but my life as well. And I think that having those experiences of going abroad are really, really important for students. And so I'm so thrilled to have you join us today and to also delve in. And I want to introduce you to Julie Alexander. She is the Program Development Manager at World Strides. And Julie, I'll let you take it away from here. Sure, thanks Addison. Hi everyone. Um, as Addison said, I am a program development manager with World Strides ISA. Essentially my role is that I've been collaborating with her and with CSU Global behind the scenes to really make sure that we are getting the logistical um, part of this program set up and also the academic content, the business visits, so that can be the most enriching global experience for you as students to be able to participate on the program. And uh, just as a quick aside, you know, I've spent pretty much my entire career in higher education both as an admin role like Addison and also as a faculty member and the first time I ever got to study abroad as a student ironically enough was also on a faculty-led program and it was also traveling to London um, and in fact the necklace I'm wearing today is from when I studied abroad, I went to Stonehenge on a free day um, and got this necklace there. And so I'm really excited for this program and for you all to get to experience London and British culture and international business as well. So thanks so much, Addison, for facilitating this webinar today. Absolutely, and thank you, Julie, for joining us. And so without further ado, let's get into the logistics. And so Julie, I'm gonna hand it over to you once again here to speak a little bit about World Strides. Yeah, sure. So World Strides, um, I know it just sounds like a random name out there, but essentially what we do, and we've been doing this for a very long time, for over 50 years, we've been cultivating educational experiences for students, both domestically and abroad. And we work over in over 100 countries across the globe um, and have in on-site offices in many of those countries so that we have university partnerships and all sorts of really cool resources for students. And so, gosh, I think we've taken over, as you can see here, millions and millions of students abroad um, and 400,000 students have traveled with us last year alone, which I know that sounds like a lot. And the good news about that is it just means that we have a lot of support systems for you to make sure that you're having the safest and most engaging experiences while abroad as possible. Wonderful. And so we are really, really happy to be partnering with World Strides. When we started um, looking into this program and whether or not it would be feasible, we contacted a variety of different um, international education companies and World Strides really met our needs, um, especially with their level of customization. And so we are thrilled to be working with them. And so to delve more into the details, what is Business 499 and Business 599? So this is a pilot course. And what I mean by that is that we have actually never launched a course where students go overseas. And so we are seeing one, if there is student interest, which it seems like there is, which is a wonderful thing. Um, if there's student interest, but also if this is something that can really benefit our students in terms of their learning outcomes and better understanding international business. And so if this, if this course is successful, it's possible that we will continue to develop other courses with this same idea um, of potentially having students go abroad or doing a different type of program here within the United States. And so it's an interdisciplinary eight week course. And so interdisciplinary means that we have a variety of disciplines that are eligible to complete this course. We'll have students from HR, finance, international business, organizational leadership. And so you'll all be able to kind of bring in your specializations and your knowledge so that we can learn from each other. And so one question I've had a lot um, from students is that this is an eight week course. Um, it runs just as your normal course would. The only difference is that during week six, that's when you would go to London. And so um, you're still gonna have assignments and everything like that. Uh, the wonderful thing though, is that while you are in London, you won't have any assignments due. And instead of doing that online discussion post, you'll actually do that in person. And so you will also have um, a mix of graduate and undergraduate students in this course. So again, you know, we can learn from each other. 
Um, and then as I previously mentioned, you know, we'll be going to London to apply the different theories and knowledge from your courses into that international business context. And then it's a faculty led um, course. And so what I mean by that is that your faculty member for this course will actually meet with you in London and help facilitate your learning. And so Julie, I'm gonna turn it over to you again and she's gonna go into a little bit more of the details about London. And again, you know, that is during week six and that's the fall C term. So it would be through October 12th through October 19th. And with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so as far as the content is concerned, we have it set up where you are going to be able to engage with a well-rounded um, business acumen. Uh, so meaning that you're going to not only learn about finances, but just general global business, how to do business in the UK versus maybe business in the United States, how we are more globally linked in our communication platforms um, more now than ever, as you well know, being students at CSU Global, um, and then of course, marketing areas of business. And so you'll be actually engaging with companies that are practicing these things that you've already learned in the classroom at that point. And therefore you can apply your knowledge into a real world setting where you can get outside of the United States and see how business is done in other parts of the world. And then as far as the cultural visits are concerned, pretty much we're including all of the major sites that there are to see in London to include the Tower, the Westminster Abbey. Um, you know, you can read all the, the sites yourself here. But what I would say um, is the biggest impact and what I felt when I, it was the first time I studied abroad and I started to step into the city of London is you're going to get to know things on a intimate scale that you never thought possible and like ev everything from minding the gap as you use the underground to navigate throughout the city um, to really understanding the ancient old world world culture and how it blends in with today's contemporary society. Anywhere that you look in London, you're going to be stepping on ground that people have been stepping on for literally thousands of years um, and building that beautiful culture, the British culture that gave birth eventually to the United States and colonies and that culture, the culture that we experience every single day. And so having that ability to see your heritage um, and also to see how the old world still melds and blends in with the new world, uh, I think is a really humbling experience. And then I cannot wait for you to get to see it for yourselves. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And so as we um, continue on, what are the steps in order for you to participate in this really awesome opportunity? Um, and so the first step is to contact your student advisor. And what they will do is make sure that you have room within your program so that you can either substitute a course or for undergraduate students that you have elective credit remaining um, so that you can participate. And then um, what will happen once your advisor confirms whether or not you're eligible, uh, you will be sent to me. And so we'll set up a time we can either talk over the phone if you have specific questions or we can communicate via email just to make sure that if there's anything specific that you need addressed, we make sure that, that your uh, questions are answered. And so um, fortunately, you know, here on number three, I have if the course has enough participants, then I will register you for the course. Uh, the great news is, is that right now, I think we're actually sitting at 11 confirmed participants. And so it looks like this course is going to launch because we have that required number of 10 participants. Otherwise, the price kind of gets a little bit too high for folks. And so um, what I'm actually going to be doing now is reaching out to the students that have uh, confirmed their interest and getting them registered for the course. And so that makes sure that um, they have that course with on their uh, degree program. And so after that, um, next week or the following, then the students are going to complete their World Strides registration. And so that is registering with Julie's company to make sure that they have all of your information, your passport, um, all of your healthcare information, as well as emergency contacts, things like that. And then you'll also get ready to set up that payment schedule. And we'll speak about payment here in just a minute. Um, so in the interim, you know, we want to make sure that you get your passport if you don't already have you have, excuse me, if you haven't already done so. Um, and then we will wait on booking the flights. Please don't quite book your flights yet. Um, the best window for that, as Julie tells me, is about 45 days out. And, and we'll reach out with people with the different information and when you should come in and things like that. So please don't book your flights yet. Um, we'll get, we'll help you with that piece. Um, and so like I said, you know, if you have any questions, if you're ready to, to jump in and, and see if you want to take or if you want to participate in this class, just feel free to reach out to me and, and I can help in any way possible. 
And so, as I mentioned, you know, cost is always something we think about with these study abroad programs. And so um, the program costs, which are the costs that are sent to World Strides, and that is for the logistical aspects of this trip. So that includes room and board, some of your meals, transportation within, company, within country. Um, there's also a World Strides staff member that is there with the students. Um, they also have medical services in case you need it, things like that. Um, so for both undergraduate and graduate students, that's a total of $3,475. Um, if we get more than 10 participants, uh, then that cost will actually go down. And so as we confirm and get the final numbers, that number may fluctuate a little bit. And then um, airfare, and we know that all students are not located in Denver. You may actually have also um, mileage that you can use from different credit cards or from um, airline programs. So that airfare may be indeed less expensive or it could be more expensive if you want to fly first class. <laughs> Um, and then we also have the meals and you know, this is going to be very, it depends on how much you want to eat and how expensive you want to go. But we estimated that at about 320 to 380. You will have to pay for lunch every day and then five of the dinners while you're there. Uh, there's also the insurance plan. We are not requiring students to get this, but we certainly really highly recommend that you do. Um, it's a travel protection plan and Julie can go into this more as well. So if you have any reason for canceling, you're going to get refunded some of that money. Julie, is there anything you want to add on that front? Yeah, so essentially when you enroll into this program, you will have embedded insurance and a lot of that is coverage for risk management. Uh, if something were to happen and you needed help in country, you're not sure if you have food poisoning or appendicitis, we've got you um, and we're here for you. Uh, what this kind of insurance does, this is an optional add-on. So our embedded insurance that you're automatically enrolled into once you go into the course, uh, it starts once you land into the United Kingdom since you're going to be organizing your flights uh, on own. And so this insurance is optional add-on to before you travel. If something were to happen, you have a death in the family or there's an emergency, there's something that's preventing you from being able to actually travel after you've already confirmed the program, then this helps cover you in case you need to get some of those funds refunded to you. Um, and so highly recommend it. It's not required. So just keep in mind with your budget, is it something that's a necessity for you? It depends on what you feel comfortable with, so. Wonderful, thank you, I appreciate your extra information. And then finally, you know, you may wanna take a little bit of extra money with you, um, money for souvenirs or any other um, cultural experiences that you may wanna participate in as you have some afternoons and then most evenings on your own. Um, and then obviously that tuition. And so tuition for most undergraduate students is gonna be 1,050, for graduates it's um, 1,500. And so you can see the estimated totals there. And so when it comes, for, comes to paying for this, um, your program costs will be due prior to the course beginning. And I'll walk you through that um, table here next in terms of those due dates. Um, but the remainder of this, with the exception of the airfare, um, will be costs that you'll take care of while you're in country. And then the tuition is going to be charged to your account, just as it normally does uh, 10 days prior to the course beginning. And so um, ways that you can pay for this, um, obviously, you know, we have a list of scholarships on the website that was sent out uh, with this webinar. Uh, and I can also send that to you as well. We also, um, it's possible that you may be able to see an increase in your financial aid if you are receiving financial aid. Um, please reach out to me for questions regarding that. Um, you can use stipends or refunds if you have that from previous financial aid disbursements. Um, maybe you wanna pick up an extra job. <laughs> maybe your employer will help you because this really is a unique opportunity that would help with your career progression. And so as we think about important dates, the final date for registration is July 3rd. Um, after that, we will not accept any more participants. And so please mark that on your calendar if this is something that you're interested in. Um, and even if you're just kind of on the fence, let me know and then I can always reach out to you to give you that reminder so that you don't miss that deadline. And then on July 5th, um, you will actually submit 50% of your program costs. So those are those costs that it's about 3,475. Again, we will have that number solidified on July 5th. 50% um, of that will be due and you'll pay that directly to World Strides. And then about a month later on August 5th, that remainder of that, I'm not very good at math, a little over 1,200 is gonna be due for you. Um, and then about the mid to um, end of August, you're gonna book your flight and we will help you through that process and, and make sure that you get 
a good deal. And then on September 9th, if we can believe it already, um, the course will begin. And so, like I said, it's just going to be your like your regular typical course. Um, you'll complete all of it online with the exception of when week six starts on October 12th, which is a Saturday, you would fly and arrive in London. And then October 19th, um, you would return to the United States all while having these wonderful experiences while you're in London. And then on November 3rd, the course would end. Um, and so those are important dates. Keep those in mind. We will be sending a recording of this webinar so that you have these. Um, they're also listed on the website and I'm also happy to provide them to you as well. And so with that, like you said, if you, if you need more information, you know, feel free to reach out to your student advisor. You can absolutely reach out directly to me. Um, I'm happy to set up some time to speak with you. You can send me an email. Um, if you haven't studied abroad before or gone abroad, I know that it can be a little intimidating, but it's one of the most incredible experiences I've had in my time. And so I really hope that you take advantage of this. Um, and then we also have the website. Uh, that goes through all of these FAQs and, and different pieces of information for you. And so with that, we are going to open it up to questions. We wanted to leave um, enough time for that. And so let's start with that here. Give me one moment as I get. All right. So I have a question here. I am located in Maryland. Would my cost include my airfare since it would be lower for me? That's a great question. And so that airfare is not included in um, the cost of the program. That's something that you have to independently pay for. And so I would imagine since you are on the East Coast, it's going to be cheaper. So yes, it could definitely be lower for you. And since we are going in October, which isn't quite the tourist season, um, I think that flights are going to be a little bit cheaper. You never know in today's world, um, but that's kind of what we're seeing. Um, and then we also have another question. Julie, do you want to add anything onto that airfare piece? One thing I do want to plug, um, and this is a completely different company, not affiliated with World Strides whatsoever, but they're actually based in Fort Collins, Colorado. And I don't know if any of you students out there have heard of Scott's Cheap Flights. Um, but it might be worth signing up. You can sign up for free uh, with your email and you will get deals if you do the free way um, you get about 30 percent of the deals but i have seen flights to and from london go as low as like 200s and 300s round trip um, if you go through scott's cheap flights and all that they do is basically notify you of different flight deals um, the only thing is you can't actually search for specific dates it's kind of luck of the draw um, otherwise google flights is a really great resource for you to utilize kayak is a really great re source to utilize to kind of compare what kind of airfare is out there for you. And those kinds of sites, Google Flights and Kayak, they give you the capability to actually search for very specific dates. If you are looking to sit in a different class, say you want to sit in um, business class or first class or something different, um, and you have the money to spare for that upgrade, then you can actually filter by what cabin you want to sit in and everything. And so there are ways to navigate airfare. Um, but we'll work also behind the scenes with Addison to help out with advice for you. Absolutely, and, and when we get to that point where we are booking airfare, we'll make sure that you send, you know, we send out all that information, you know, the best websites to look at and things to be aware of, uh, so that we make sure that we all end up at the same place on the same day. <laughs> the next question is, um, can my family come with me and stay in the room? So this is a question I've been asked a couple times, and so Julie and her team are working on creating guest packages. Um, and so maybe you have a husband or um, a son or a daughter that, or a friend that you want to join. Um, we'll be help creating guest packages that where they could stay in the room with you, but also um, where they would potentially could participate on the cultural sites as well. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that they wouldn't be allowed on those business visits because that is specifically for CSU Global students. And Julie, please chime in if I'm missing anything. No, you got it. It's okay. golden. Essentially, um, the guest packages right now, we're assessing and, and building those, um, but they would include your guest housing, sharing the room with you, assuming that they're a spouse. Um, it would include any group meals that you have together. It would include all the cultural experiences and a public transportation pass so that they can make their way around the city of London while you're off doing your business visits. Uh, they can go and entertain themselves as well. Perfect, thank you. Uh, then, not sure if you mentioned this, how much money is recommended to take for extras? So food, trinkets, I like the trinkets, I'm terrible with the trinkets. <laughs> um, we recommend generally for food, we're looking at about 320 to 340. 
um, souvenirs and things like that, I estimated between 200 and 500. It really depends on you. Um, some people want to experience London in every way possible. So that includes getting, you know, the best food and going to every single cultural excursion you can possibly fit into that week. So it really depends on you. Um, but I think between if you, I mean, do math, like I said, I'm not real good at math, but if you took an extra 500 to 1,000, that should cover you. Would you agree with that, Julie? I would say yes. And I mean, it's one of those numbers that's pretty in flux because the trinkets and souvenirs part is, it just varies from person to person. I, when I studied abroad, I know that I had different students, uh, classmates that were able to go off of as little as 600 to $800. Um, and we were there for a couple of weeks. Uh, I also know people that literally blew like $2,000 just to because they like took the channel to Paris for a day and like they did some crazy stuff so it just depends on what you're comfortable with and what your budget is but I think that you can make pretty much any budget for souvenirs work really well I do think the 300 to 500 for food is a pretty good estimate I will tell you that when you go around London depending on what your dietary constraints are um, there are a lot of like pasty carts and pasties are basically you can kind of think of them as turnover pies that you can hold them and they actually have like meat, veggies, whatever you need. So there are ways to eat on a cheaper budget in London, um, but not everyone likes to always eat from a street cart. Maybe sometimes they want to go to a sit down restaurant and it can be a little bit more expensive. So yeah. Perfect. All right. Is there a GPA requirement to be eligible to study abroad? The only uh, requirement that we have is that you have um, room within your program that you have that you're in um, good academic standing. And so that's why I recommend reaching out to your student advisor. They'll make sure that, that you're in good academic standing. And so that includes completion rate as well as your GPA. Um, generally, in terms of GPA for um, graduate, you have to be at least a 3.0 and undergraduate a 2.0. Um, if you're missing that, you know, reach out to me and I can also see, see what we can do there too. Um, let's see here. What what airport would we be flying into? You know, um, Julie, I would imagine probably Heathrow, but there's Gatwick as well, and there's another one, isn't there? There are a few different airports. I would say the odds are that Heathrow would be the one that you would want to fly into, um, and I believe that we uh, would work with you as far as an airport transfer based off of the most common arrival time of all students and that'll be confirmed before the program travels so we'll let you know um, but I would plan on Heathrow and while we're on the topic of airports and airfare I did notice that Cindy had a quick question about Scott's cheap flights um, so Scott's cheap flights just to follow up from earlier, it has a few different ways that you can interact with it as a member. There should be an option where it's free and you just sign up with your email. That said, they do have other ways that you can pay for membership. Like I said, the free version is you only get about 30% of the deals, but if you sign up for the membership, then they'll send you like multiple deals a day more often than not. Uh, but whether or not those deals would be applicable to you, I don't know. So if you're an avid traveler, maybe it might be worth the investment. Otherwise, I would just say to stick to the free version. It should still be available. Um, I haven't done it since, gosh, a couple of years ago, but I believe that the free version is still available. Okay, sorry, just wanted to answer that. No, for please, that's right great, away. that's wonderful. Um, when would I need to get my passport by in order to participate in the learning abroad experience? So let me, um, for the person that's specifically asking this question, I should have the confirmed number of students um, hopefully by, let's say, end of next week. If you want to follow up directly, addison.welsh at csuglobal.edu. Um, let me know, you know, if you're committed to going, because otherwise, let's make sure that we get that passport process started as early as possible. Um, Julia, right now, what do you know the average for how long it's taking passports to be processed? I actually just sent mine in. Oh, gosh. You know, it really depends on the time of year and it, how many other people are renewing their passports. The good news with this being in October is it is off season for a lot of um, people that are looking to travel internationally from the United States. I would say typically it can take anywhere from six to eight weeks. Um, there are ways that you can expedite your passport though, but I, I would say let's talk more specifically on a case by case basis. If you want to reach out to Addison directly and then we can touch base and figure out exactly what your situation is. Definitely. Perfect. Okay. Um, recommendations around currency exchange. 
Julie, I'm going to let you tackle that one. This one's a fun one. And I actually just went through it uh, myself because I just came back from Italy. And the, it's always a question of when should I exchange my money? Um, I have found that the, of course, the US dollar does fluctuate um, constantly against all kinds of foreign currencies to include the British pound. Um, I would say that your best bet is to exchange your currency while you're already at home, meaning try and find a um, see if your bank will allow you to exchange your currency directly through them. You can go to the airport, the domestic airport, for example, if you go to Denver airport, if you're local to Colorado, you do have the ability to exchange currency at the airport. The thing that I will tell you is any kind of foreign exchange currency um, organization like that will take a pretty large percentage of your cash. Um, some of them will take like up to 15% of the overall amount that you're converting over. And so the easiest thing would be to see if you can go to the bank um, before you even head to the airport. I would plan it far in advance um, and do some research on where you can exchange your currency locally to you. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed that a lot of people do is if you have a card, say that Again, just speaking locally with Colorado, if you're a military veteran and you are a member with USAA, or if you have um, some sort of banking card that does not have a foreign transaction fee, you are able to actually utilize ATMs in country when you're in London and withdraw cash and it will withdraw in Great British Pounds. Um, the issue with that for a lot of people is that the foreign transaction fee tends to um, put a fee every time you take out money from an ATM in a foreign country. But if you happen to have a bank that doesn't have foreign transaction fees, you can simply take it out um, without them having to take any kind of fees as a cut. Uh, so I would look into that as well. You do have some time between now and October, so it might be worth checking and seeing if there is a banking institution um, near you that offers free, like no foreign transaction fees whatsoever, and that would probably be the most secure method. Wonderful. You are such a great resource. <laughs> um, where Travel we, a lot. Yes, yes, you do. Um, where will we be staying? And do you know the exact hotel yet? So yes, we do know where we're staying. It is called the Grange White Hall Hotel. And I am going to pop this into the Zoom session here real quick. If I could type. And then the next question that we have here is, if someone has a child, like a or a guest, excuse me, a child or a spouse, would they have to share with another single um, student? No, you would likely get your own room. Is that right, Julie? That is correct. So if you have your spouse coming to join you or you have a child and we would want to touch base on the age of your child to just assess whether or not we need a crib or roll away bed or if we need a, a waiver if they're a minor, um, then they would be program to share the room with you. Uh, you would not be having you and your family and another student in the same room. That would be kind of awkward, I think, for everyone. And so um, depending on who's coming with you, we would work with you to configure the rooming situation. Perfect. Um, and then they asked, is it okay to fly in early and stay in the same hotel? Julie, if I remember right, they can stay a little bit early and a little bit late on both ends with the same rate. Am I right on that? I believe we looked into it. Let me double check that for you um, okay. just to make sure that it's still the case. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. And then if um, whoever asked that question, if you want to reach out to me directly and we'll make sure that we follow up with you. Is travel insurance needed? Julie, I'm going to let you take that one. So um, your travel insurance is actually already embedded with the program fee. So we offer everything um, from medical insurance, mental health coverage to emergency medical response. Um, so that is embedded within the program fee itself. So you will have insurance while you are abroad just through our insurance that we provide for you. You do have the option before you travel, uh, there's a cancel for any reason optional policy that you can partake in. That insurance is mostly just to cover you in case for whatever reason something comes up and you can't travel and you're trying to recover some of those program fee funds. Um, at that point, that would be an insurance that may be of interest to you. I think it's $199. And again, it's optional. It's not necessary, but you will have insurance um, 
covering you while you are in country in the United Kingdom. So you don't need to purchase separate travel insurance unless you absolutely want to for safe of, like sake of peace of mind, but you are covered. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Is the transportation from the airport to the rooms arranged for us? That's a great question. And so from my understanding, and Julie is the expert here again, um, if we have a common time that students are gonna be arriving at the airport as well as departing, um, World Strides will be sure to pick you up and also take you back to the airport. If you are arriving on your own, that's not during that group time, um, you'll be responsible for getting to your room, but we will be sure to give you all the information that you need. We're not just going to leave you high and dry and say, hope we see you at the airport. We'll be sure to, to give you that information in case you, we don't give you that transportation to the hotel. Yeah, just to jump on top of that, before yes. the program actually travels, you will be providing us your or individual flight information and that's how we set that common arrival time window um, and then if you are outside of that window then we will be sure to touch base with you individually to make sure that you are successful at being able to navigate to the hotel from Heathrow or whatever airport that you end up flying into. Uh, we have the next question is about um, courses and so if I'm taking two graduate Is, can I take this additional course in addition to your student course? I was an advisor at one time. It's, it's been too long, but I would reach out to your student advisor to see if it's possible to get that um, reviewed and, and if you can take an additional course. Um, can financial aid be used for this course? It is possible. Uh, let me know if you are interested in that. We Basically what we do is we send in, um, information over to the financial aid office and ask them to calculate how much more additional funds you may receive. I do want to let you know that undergraduate students are likely to receive less than graduate students, and that's simply because of the cost of attendance. Um, so again, if you do want to use financial aid, please do let me know so that we can start getting that ball rolling. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that those program costs are going to be due prior to your financial aid dispersing. And so um, it's going to be one of those things where you're going to have to pay those out of pocket prior to getting that money from financial aid. Um, can a student request their own room? By golly, they certainly can. Um, and you are right that there's going to be an additional cost. And that's, as of right now, um, 845, or excuse me, $845 for a single accommodation room. Julie's not adding anything to that. Um, another great question. Nope. Okay. Um, another great question here. What British or international corporations will we be visiting? Those are not set in stone until, is it six weeks prior to the course beginning, Julie? So they will be 100% confirmed probably by 21 days prior to departure. So you'll definitely know who you're visiting before then. I will tell you one of the luxuries of being in business for over 50 years is that we have really great connections in London in particular. And so we'll let you know exactly what those details are the closer that we get to departure so odds are it will be after you register before you'll know for sure but you'll definitely know before you depart so that you can do some research prior to being able to go into the country excellent and then in that same vein you know any idea on the types of corporations or industries yes and we do have information on that on the website um, so it's looking like the majority of the um, industries will be finance marketing communication international business we also have banking in there and there'll be some HR thrown in there as well. And the next question, we've got just a couple left. So if you have any questions you wanna get in, please do submit them. Um, is this course graded on the typical grading scale? Yes. Wouldn't it be delightful if it was pass or fail? <laughs> um, it is graded on the typical grading scale. You are correct. Um, and undergraduate and graduate students will have different course requirements. Um, so if you're a graduate, it's not going to be um, undergraduate requirements. And if you're an undergrad, it's not going to be graduate requirements. Um, we've got one more question, so please be sure to submit those questions. Um, so I joined late. What is the departure date and how long is the program? The departure date for the course, or excuse me, the departure date for the um, time in London is going to be on October 12th. And that's a week long that you'll be actually in London. And so until October 19th but the course itself starts um, fall C, which is in September, and then we'll wrap up at the beginning of November. And then the next question, any more info on the HR aspect of the program? We do not have any more information until we get those companies um, solidified, just as Julie announced. 
And just so you know, the reason for that is um, we don't like to make any promises unless we know for a hundred percent sure that we can deliver. And every company, as you know, are working professionals, like many of you who are um, with CSU Global, you're working professionals yourselves. So we like to coordinate with our speakers and coordinate with the company's schedules to make sure that it's close enough to where we can confirm it. There are no conflicts, um, but that it's not too far in advance to where something could pop up and we promise it and then something could change or fall through or meeting shift and then our speakers have to reschedule and so it's just to try and create as smooth a possible experience for you while you're on the ground in London. Excellent. Our final question for today it looks like oh maybe there's two more. Um, will this course be taken with another well in the fall C um, trimester? That's entirely up to you and so we can talk about that. One thing you want to be aware of is if you know financial aid requirements um, if you need to have a certain number of credits in order to be eligible for financial aid, please keep that in mind. Um, if you do indeed have to take this, or if you take the Business 499, Business 599 course, along with another one um, at CSU Global, we'll just want to make sure that we speak with your instructor so that they know that during, you know, week six of the course that you're going to be overseas, just so that um, we keep you caught up in the class. And so, you know, keep me posted on that and we can talk about a way to to get your schedule all figured out and we can work with your student advisor too. Um, is there a payment plan in case you're unable to pay the 50% by July? Unfortunately, there is not. Um, Julie, do you wanna to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, the reason why we have uh, the timeline in advance is just so that we can make sure that we're securing all of the ground services consistently for all the students in the group. And therefore, because of different deposit and payment timelines with, uh, say, the hotel, with all the cultural experiences and transportation, everything that is included on the program, we do have to have it um, prior to departure and unfortunately it would be July for that. Um, if you are pretty certain that you're going to have all of that money then maybe touch base with Addison directly and we can see if there's any flexibility for your particular case um, but odds are that there likely won't be and I'm very sorry to have to say that. Yeah. That's tough. I, I know I um, when I went to Australia I definitely had to rely on financial aid as well. But I think that that wraps it up for us. Thank you so much, Julie, for joining. And thank you all for your wonderful questions, for your interest in the program. Again, if you are interested in joining and, and want to join us on this awesome adventure, please feel free to reach out to me. It's addison.welsh at csuglobal.edu. Lauren has added that into the Zoom, or into the Zoom chat. And um, any, any final words, Julie? No, I just am super excited that you all were able to experience the webinar today, that you were able to get more information about the course, and I sincerely hope that it works out, that you can come and travel and go and experience London and learn about international business there and different practices. Um, I think it's a really great opportunity, and so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Addison. Of course, I'll be behind the scenes helping Addison out with any particular cases as well, um, but of course, our goal is that we want as many students as possible to have this experience so feel free if there's ever in a doubt in your mind or something you just need to know reach out ask um, and we're here to help so we'll try our best to make sure that we can enable you to go absolutely I, I couldn't agree more with Julie on that so just get in conversation with me 